think you could convincingly make the case that this is the best match that the Demons have fronted up into under Paul Roos. It has a sense of occasion. It's Sunday at the MCG. They're the right side of the win-loss ledger after a decent sample size. And they come up against a vaunted opponent, but not an untouchable one. What a performance by the Demons. What we saw last week is a good representation of where we are as a club. You know, I think we're the youngest club in the, in the round. But if we get a contribution for all our players, then we're a really good team. There's a demolition in there. Come to play your role, come to play with, with energy, enthusiasm. And then, yeah, the scoreboard will tick over one way or the other. If we can get it right, you know, I'm sure it's going to be a, a terrific game. Siren sounds. Dogs are home. What a huge win for them. Through some uh, difficult patches with injury, I think our boys have been able to hang on pretty well. And uh, we do go in with a head of steam now, though, after beating a very good side in the Adelaide Crows. It'd be great to see where we are in comparison to them because they've, they've become a, a really, really good footy team. They've improved their game quite significantly and um, credit to them to be able to do that. But if we get the balance right like we did against the Crows, then we'll be hard to beat. Pink Lady match has plenty in it. Paul Roos, welcome back to the 360 desk. Evening, gentlemen. It's good to be back. Good to see Feel you. Feel comfortable? Yes, yes, it's good. Oh. There's no one at the other end, though. It's a bit imbalanced. It is imbalanced. Oh, I'm a little bit annoyed. I mean, for two years we had you next to us and you're throwing up excuses <laughs> and reasons. You finally start winning. We don't get an opportunity to talk about that jumps, you know. Every week we were asking you, what are you doing, what are yeah. you doing? And we've missed it this week. Missed it this year, I should say. Those incremental jumps, and there's been some significant jumps this year. Yeah, look, it is a process, and I think we, we talk about it, and sometimes people think it's a bit of a cliché, but, yeah, going to the footy club, um, you probably don't really understand a club. When I first started at Sydney, I'd been there and I'd played there, so you have a, a greater understanding of the, the workings of the club and the players, etc., etc. So the first 12 months were as much a, a fact-finding mission about... Yeah, what the players were capable of doing, who could do it, who couldn't, continuing to build. Um, you know, and then the second year was building on that. And then, yeah, look, things are starting to come together and we've made a lot of changes to our list and um, personnel and all those sorts of things. So, yeah, it, it is a process. It doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. Are you in the best place yet? Which would simply make sense. But it sort of feels quite tangible on a whole number of fronts, not just win-loss. Yeah, I think the win-loss sometimes can be... Um, either way can be a bit um, exaggerated or a bit under underperforming, but you've actually played well. I think the Brisbane Lions have actually played some good footy, but they've had a really tough draw. I, I think what I see our team is just with the, all the changes we've made with the recruiting. Yeah, when you're picking a team, that's probably the, the best sign. And at the moment, we haven't got a lot of injuries as well. That can change pretty quickly, as we know in football. But I think when you're picking a team, it's a lot harder to pick the team now. And that's that's probably a good representation of where you think you're at as a footy club. Oh, I want to ask you something personal. Um, were you Have you always been a little bit wary of, of your legacy? You were a, a champion footballer, a premiership coach, first two years at Melbourne... The criticism was about you. The third year, you're starting to deliver. Were you nervous going into this year, thinking, this has actually taken me maybe a little bit longer than I thought. I'm out at the end of the year. We might have gone from four games to seven games to eight games. Would that have been enough for you? Because you're a competitive yeah, bugger. Would I that think, have been enough? I think probably people... No, I don't think misread the role because a senior coaching role is always a senior coaching role. And then you hear Bucks and we spoke about it, Scotty coming on, it's about win loss, there's no doubt about that. But I think I was clear in the role that Peter Jackson and Glenn Bartlett asked me to do. You know, it was, it was probably at the start bringing some coaches that I knew, that knew the game plan, George Stone, Benny Matthews, Daniel McPherson, Brett, Brett Allison, um, looking at the list, working with, with Todd Viney, Jason Taylor... The succession plan was a really big part of it, um, identifying that. So it was, it was somewhat different to just win-loss. And, and at, at some point, don't get me wrong, we, we were all judged on that. But I think because we were really clear on what the expectations are and what I expected of myself was to create a team that I could hand over. People ask me now, you, you know, you... You, do you want to keep going? No, I was really clear in what I wanted to do. And I think that helped 
whether the, the criticism, I always expected that to happen, you know, because I, I knew it wasn't going to happen overnight. You know, you, you, you're taking a team that's, I think it was two wins and 50-something percent. Um, so what I'm pleased of is we've provided the players with a great environment. You know, we've got a coach in waiting, Simon Goodwin, that could step in next week and take over. We've got an experienced coaching group. We've got Brendan McCartney, who's come with great pedigree. So that's as much what I was entrusted to do as winning and losing games of footy. That's the core business, the footy club. Last year, Rizzi, you said there's a veil of negativity around the supporters. And I think supporters took that a little bit indifferently. This year, are you very much aware of the joy and the satisfaction that these Melbourne supporters have put up with for so long? That are you getting a joy out of their joy, oh, seeing what's happening? Yeah, that's probably the main... Oh, well, like I love winning. You said I'm competitive. and Anyone that knows me knows I'm competitive. And my family loves being involved. But the biggest satisfaction I get is Nathan Jones jumps on the bus on Saturday night and said, oh, well done, mate. That was or Sunday morning. I said, well done. That was great. He said, it's been a while since we won like that. So... Yeah, and fans coming to training and, and fans sending messages. So I'm, I guess the negative negativity part was probably taken a little bit out of context. What, what I said and meant at the time is you just hear from more Melbourne people when you lose than when you win. And I understood why, because it's been so, it'd been so long um, that, that they'd put up with um, yeah, those sort of performances, etc. So I completely understood why. And even though I couldn't impact the previous years that I hadn't been at the club, you feel it. You know, you immediately feel the burden. But, I, but what I really like about now is probably because we've made so many changes in personnel, Goody coming in, Macca coming in, you know... Players' personnel. Players' the, personnel. The, 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 we don't even refer to the... And, and the sceptics will say, oh, it's because you, you're four and three now. Yeah. No, no, we... It was real and it was there. And, and some people didn't like me talking about it. Well, I, I didn't care. I tried to answer the questions as honestly as I possibly could on, on this show. And I was criticised for it. Fair enough, I understand why. But it was real and it was something we addressed, we had to address. It's no longer there because, you know, Clayton Oliver's there and Brayshaw's there and Petraka's mm -hmm. there and um, Kennedy, Bug, Lumumba. So that um, so heaps yeah, of them. Heaps, heaps the of them. So the yeah. personnel, it's changed dramatically. So we don't even talk about the past now because it's finally been eradicated you know, in whatever way, shape or form. And it is about the future and Jack Viney sort of emphasises that yesterday. There's the there's that sense of excitement when the story breaks when Robbo brings the back page last night that he signed for four more years and there he is out in the streets of Melbourne in his, in his gear. I am curious with Jack is... And we talked about this a bit off air last night. Is he now more than you would have imagined he was going to be? As a young player, he looked like he was going to be a contested ball animal who would be a fine tagger. Yeah. And now he is a genuine playmaker up with, up with the really good ones. Yeah, it's interesting. I think when you look at players, you try and pass on your experience from watching other players. And I remember talking to Jack a lot about his outside game. And I, and I felt that he could be a good outside player because he's got good... Sp his, his, a, his A game was always going to be... You forgot to turn your phone yeah, off. No, yeah. His, his A game is... That's probably... I just said that so people up. don't blame me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I can throw you under I'll the bus because you're only coming. Who, yeah, is it, who is it? Just read Jesse Words with friends. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's Lynchy. It's Lynchy. No, it's not. It's Jesse Hogan <laughs> saying, I'm staying, I'm, coach. I've landed. But I think... Because, uh, I mean, his A game is always going to be his contested ball, his hardness around the footy. But to answer your question... I sensed it was there, but I, but it was probably more getting it across to Jack that that you have got speed, you can get outside, and that's been the biggest transformation in his game. You know, he's two goals on the weekend, two really good goals, one outside of stoppage, uh, one from a handball receive, and that's indicative of where he's taken his football. How and then, you, can I... Uh, we you can, that you one. can, you can. Max Gorn is almost in the same category for us. We got to meet him the other day. And he had spoken about wanting to be one of the best ruckmen. To watch him now is to think that he is. And again, a couple of years ago, that, would, that was hard to envision from the outside. Yeah, look, Max um, has been at the footy club for a long period of time. Probably people who don't follow Melbourne wouldn't understand that. He's also been through a lot of injuries. And, uh, and I guess Max is probably... Well, hopefully is a bit of a product of what we tried to do at the footy club over the last two or three years, and that's make guys really earn their position. I think Good if you evidence. remember... Good evidence. Yeah, that he, that he didn't get a game early last year. We were playing Mark Jamar, and he was getting a little bit frustrated in the seconds, and we sat him down, and we spoke to him, and he said, look, this is the way we really want you to play. And to his credit, he, he really embraced that. Probably took another three or four weeks for him to get in, and when he came in, 
He played some really good football at the back end of last year, had a full pre-season. So, it's, again, it's no surprise to me that he's having a, a terrific season. Are you kind of coach, Ruzi, um, to not put a ceiling on anything internally, but it's tight-lipped outside... I tried to get Jack Viney to say finals <laughs> yesterday in about 14 different ways, and he didn't. And he didn't yeah, say yeah. it. So I got the impression that he feet firmly and listening to Nathan Jones speak and listening to Bernie Vince speak, all the all your leaders. It, it's it's this excitement must be bubbling in them like so unbelievably well. But they they seem to be keeping a, a lid on. Is that your direction? Is that them driving that? I think they. I think collectively we still understand where we're at. We we, we don't talk about where you're going to finish. I mean, we still have to talk about a training session. You know, how do we train well? Um, Analysing a game really closely, understanding because our players still have to understand what makes a great football team. And I think that's where Jack and Nathan and Bernie being experienced um, is really good at passing that on. So we, we really don't talk about who we're going to beat. And, we, you know, th- this week's game is, is difficult. Next week's game is difficult for us. We know we're still a really... I think we're the youngest team in the, in the competition. That youngest really and least experienced. On the weekend. Yeah. On the weekend, 18th and yeah. Most. Is that by design or is that just how it's happened? Well, it's just sort of happened. And I, I think, you know, I've always been... I reluctance not the right term, but I've always wanted the, the players to, to earn their spots. Christian Petrack is another good example. You know, I think three or four years ago, they would have just gotten games because they were early draft picks. And, and all of us as, as coaches have made a conscious decision to make sure they're playing well at our VFL team, Casey. And then once, regardless of age or oldest, youngest, once they're doing that, we try to promote them and we try to get them in the team. And Christian took a little bit longer than what most people thought. But again, his, his game against St Kilda, in which we lost, we felt he played pretty well. And on the weekend, he took another step forward again. Were so, you insulted? Yes. Go on. Were you insulted, Rusey, when people were suggesting that Simon Goodwin is having a real big say over this? Now, you are a competitive person. I've seen you angry a couple of times in your life. Were you, ins- <laughs> were you insulted? <laughs> no, not at all. No, no, look, I, I think... I think probably more insulted by the lack of understanding how a footy club works. I mean, I, I, a lot of the coaching technical stuff is not done by me. It, the, the, our assistant coaches do an incredible job. Mm. Simon Goodwin's made a massive difference to our football club, but probably more disrespectful to Benny Matthews and, and, and Brett Allison and Daniel McPherson rather than me because everyone's contributed. Jade Rawlings has been fantastic. Brendan McCart- that, um Justin, everyone. And I think if you really understand how a footy club works, a senior coach, now particularly, I guess, the role that I've taken is more about the, the form and the guy that just sort of wanders around and makes sure... Are you a relationship you know, coach? Oh, do yeah. you, seriously, you don't take training, do you? Not much, not really. So what do you do? I don't go to training that yeah, often. Yeah. Do you, no, no, do, we, we, do you like, go and talk to individuals? And so, come here, I need to talk to you about yeah, something. Well, what about... We, I mean, what we try and do as training is keep training going. So, really, when you talk about someone taking training, it probably doesn't happen that much anymore. We set, Goody will get up and say, this is what we're doing for training today. So, they just and, go and jump And we'll try and right. go. And, and you'll pull guys out during the session, just quickly talk to them while the training session's going, occasionally grab them between drills. Um, I mean, I do a lot of work with the leaders, try and get all the players in that played on the weekend, have a quick chat to them. But the, the assistant coaches do a power of work, a, a technical stuff, you know, going over vision with them, all those sorts of things. <coughs> Because the expectations has risen outside and, and inside, the results demand that you think, right, how far can we go this year? Has that changed your approach? Do you go into another cog of coaching, right? Teaching, 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 right? They're learning that. Now we're going on to the next aspect, which is what dealing with expectation. People were saying Melbourne never win two in a row. They don't like yep. that pressure. Do you? Is that an aspect of coaching that that you 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 implore on your on your players? Um, look, we're adding more layers in terms of our game plan. I mean, Goody's fantastic at that. Um, and, and we're drip-feeding different things into the players. But that's not necessarily about expectation. That's probably just the level of understanding we think our players have got compared to two years ago. Look, two years ago when <clears throat> we first arrived, um, yeah, it was really about just winning the contest and just picking one aspect and really mm. nailing it, trying to nail it down. Now the education phase is much broader. Probably my role is more about 
you know, what are the standards? What, what's the mindset when you're going into a game? You know, you've won a, won a game. You know, what's the mindset now going into the Bulldogs game? You know, terrific team, young team. So really it's more the, the mental side of it and leaving the, the, the technical coaching up to the, the assistant coaches and the coaches are doing a great job. So I, I don't know whether that actually answers your question, but it's more... It's just continued education, really, with what we're trying to do, both both technical and you know, the mental side and of the preparation and the mental side of being a you know, 22 weeks is a long time. You know, mm. 22 games plus finals, a big year a for quarter's a quarter's a long time for some clubs it, this year, yeah, no, including it is. yours. And when you got it, yeah, it is. And when you got a young team, a lot of it's about you know reading players and management of players. Uh, Jesse Hogan, is, this will probably be. You haven't been long asked this. Gone. Um, why, why was he on the road between round seven and round eight back to Western Australia? Look, it, it, part of it is the management. I guess that's the role of all the coaches. Look, look, Clayton Oliver had a weekend off, and his home just happens to be up on the border, so he has, doesn't have to go back to what we're trying to do with Jesse. Given we want him to continue to play, is work out a period where he can get home. Yeah, so. Yeah, Angus Brayshaw, I think Sam Wiedemann didn't play last uh, two weeks ago. Liam Hewlett didn't play on the weekend. Yeah, obviously we want our senior players and older players to keep playing. Jesse's not in that category, but we don't think we need to give him a weekend off. We're trying to manage him still, as we will do with a lot of our players during the year. Me and Jared are coming over to Hawaii at the end of the year. Stay at your place. We have to rent somewhere. Have you bought over there? Yeah, no, I've got a house over there. Got the rooms? Yeah, it's plenty of, plus plenty of space. I'll right. give you a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there in December for a couple of weeks, OK? Beautiful. Will, will they give Jesse a good deal? Uh, what did you think of Brownie's $15 million over 10 oh, years? Look, I, again, I, having worked in the media and understanding, I mean, the media are there to, to, to speculate and to throw out stories, etc., etc. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't have enough to do with players' contracts. I think $15 million, is we're that... at that level? Is that... I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think we're at that level yet. But, I mean, I remember when Alistair Lynch signed for... for a 10 year one point nine million dollars yeah. over 10 years was the biggest yeah, amount it was of money huge. and then buddy and so look I don't know I, I guess what we're trying to do though and Brownie probably acknowledged it and I think Jared mentioned Jared Hilly mentioned it as well in order to keep a group together can't do you that. can't do that can't do you that. know someone else might be able to do that mm. but we can't do that Jesse will get really well paid and we hope and you know we think he's going to stay at the Melbourne Footy Club along with Jack Viney who's just signed and a lot of those other young guys well you get more, your million so you're going, so there's yeah, a million. Go the salary salary go oh, no, we can yeah. work out ways, can't we? Oh, no, can I'm you sign that? Sign that? How, actually, just talk about that. What a yeah, success look, it's, it's been. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's been great. I mean, look, it's, it's been a, a fantastic to be involved in. You touched on before some, some sad stories, but inspiring stories as well. Hopefully everyone gets along on the weekend. I guess for our footy club, yeah, it's, a, it's an extension of the... Yeah, the women's game that we have coming up. We've got Daisy Pierce working at the club now. We've got mm. Michelle Cohen working at the footy club now. Hopefully we'll get a licence. Um, so this is a whole thing wrapped up in our football club and a, a really important part of it. Good Sign it. Sign away. Lots we'll happening at away. Melbourne. Yeah, They're an exciting is. club to follow at the moment, Rizzi. It's good to touch base. You've done Thank a really you. good job. <laughs> <laughs> now let's Ruse. play finals. <laughs> Paul Ruse with us on AFL 360.